Welcome to this tutorial on using CSS selectors. I'm going to show you how easy it is to locate elements on a page using various CSS selector strategies. Let's begin by taking a look at this e-commerce website. We have a search box here. I'm going to use my developer console, click on this arrow, and select this search box. We see that it has various attributes such as type, ID, value name, and so forth. I'm concerned with the ID. So I'm going to select this, the name of the ID, copy it, and then hit Control F. This will allow me to test my selector. To find by ID, there are very different ways you can do it. One way is to enter a hash symbol, and then the name of the ID. The hash symbol indicates ID, and we're saying the ID name is this. And we see that the ID is right here, the element is found. Another way you can do it is to explicitly say ID. And we do that inside brackets. Say ID is equal to, and then the name of the ID. Again, the element is found. One other way you can do it is saying that the ID begins with a certain word or a certain sort of letters. And to do that, I use the caret symbol. It begins with two tab. I see that the element, there's only one element. It tells me right here there's only one element in this query. You can also say that the ID ends in a certain word or a certain set of letters. To do that, you use the dollar symbol. ID ends in, and I'm going to say that it ends in text box. I'm going to delete all of this. Again, we see that the element is found. The last symbol we're going to take a look at is the asterisk. With the asterisk, you can say that the ID contains a specific text. So let's replace this dollar sign with an asterisk. Get rid of this text. And we're going to say that the ID contains search text. And as you can see, we have found the same element. So there you have it. There are three different symbols that you can use with the ID. You can use a caret to say that the ID begins with a specific text or you can use a dollar sign to say that it ends with a specific text. And lastly, you can use an asterisk to say that the ID contains a specific text. One other way you can do it is by using the class name. So let's say we want to click on this button, magnifying glass. I'm going to use my developer console, click on this, and we see that the class name for this is nav-input. So I'm going to copy this well, first I need to cancel my previous query. I need to select this, copy, control find. And to find my class, you simply type period and then the class name. And apparently there are two results. If you press enter, it's gonna switch back and forth between the two results. These two elements have the same class. This search box and the magnifying glass share the same class. So if we want to find this, we need to narrow this down a little bit further. So let's go back to this element and see what else we can find that makes it unique. We see that the, this attribute called type is submit. So perhaps I will use this and say something like this. I'm going to say brackets, the attribute name is equal to submit, then where the class name is equal to nav input. So I'm using the period. The class name is equal to nav input. And I only have one result. When I put my mouse over that, I can see that the magnifying glass is being selected. Next, let's clear our query and have a look at this element here, shop colors essentials. So I'm gonna select that element and try to find this by class. We see that the class name has a space in between it. So if I select this class name, copy this and say class is this, and I press enter, I get no results. There are zero results. So when the class name contains a space, what you need to do is simply remove the space and put a period there. And now we find that element. 
One other thing that I would like to point out when it comes to selecting elements through the class name is that if you have an element where you have something like this, where you have a space, what this basically means is that this element is associated with two different classes. So one of the classes is this one, and the other one is this one. Sometimes you might be able to get away by using one or the other. In this case, let's say we only want to use the first class. We could get rid of this part, and now we see that there are 81 elements in this page containing this class. So let's go back, and now let's say we only want to use the second part. So we're going to re remove this, and now we only have one element, which is that one. So that's an, another thing that you need to keep in mind. All right, let's say that you want to find this title. We're going to click on that element and we see that there is, this is an H1 tag. We can simply say H1, hit enter, and we see that there are two results, one, two. So to make it unique, we could select this class name and we can say H1, where the class name is equal to this. And again, we're going to have to replace the spaces with periods. One more here. And now we only have one result. So we're saying H1, where the class name is equal to this. Let's direct our attention now to finding an element with relation to another element. So let's say that we want to find this cart. First, I'm going to take a look at this element here, which says try prime. So let's click that. We see it's an anchor tag, and we have an ID. So I'm going to copy this ID, and I'm going to say the following. The ID is this, and then I'm going to use the plus symbol. What I'm doing with this is saying find the element that is immediately after this anchor tag. So I'm going to find the next anchor tag, which is this one. Notice if we put our mouse over this, it's selecting the cart. So that's how you do it. Let's take another look at this search text box. Before we went ahead and found it by ID, let's try to find it by name this time. First we're going to copy the name, we use our brackets, I'm going to say that the name is equal to this, and we have found it. What about this attribute here? We have dir equals auto, so let's try that. DIR is equal to auto. Same thing, we find the same element. But suppose you had found a bunch of these elements. Right now we only see one of one, but if we had more than one, we could additionally narrow it down by saying that this is an input element. So we could put something in front and say input, and then DIR equals auto. Let's take a look at another example where we need to find elements in a list. In this case, I want to select this link right here for LinkedIn. I already know this is inside of a list, so let's find those items. And here we have our list. Inside the list, you have different line items. And it looks like I need the third one for LinkedIn. So I'm going to select this class name copy it. I'm going to say dot the class name is equal to that and then put a space I'm going to say li colon nth child and I'm going to say number three and as you can see LinkedIn is selected. I really hope you've had fun learning about the CSS selector. As you can see it's pretty simple to use if you would like to learn more, head over to W3Schools to get a detailed description of all the selectors that are available within CSS.